But the, although that point defense is going to prevent any kind of rail luck. And the two large shields and the eight small shields, there's no way those four rails are going to do anything to the front of that ship. Just got to hope he takes it well. Best chance is to try dodging it to not make the piloting easy. Oof. What? I had some delayed explosions, but it seems to have done the trick. Mace is to kind of die from the fire again. They're going to start choosing to discard their armor. A bold choice, to say the least. Auto firing the disruptors alongside the ions. This will allow Lunastro to have much higher accuracy at range as well as the ability to actively aim, which is something that most of the time ion ships do not do. Also, it could allow him to ram better because if he's rammed against Ultra, it doesn't really matter what's on his front. And he's yeah. going to be more interested in being able to precisely cut into. Yes, oh. Lunastro's ion Incorrect. is well tuned to fight missile barges with its thick amount of side armor. Typically, these ships have much thinner side armor, so they can better win mirror mashes, but Lunastro is doing a good job of focusing through Anthrax right now. He's going to cut into a control room very soon. Sadly, a piece of his own armor knocked him off a little bit. Very unfortunate. Um, choosing He's to still managing. Choosing to continue firing through the hole instead of widening it or aiming for more relevant parts, now remedying that fact, and trying to go for the control room, I imagine. Deny Anthrax control of his ship. You think he has enough to... Uh, yeah, I think that would throw out control because of how big the ship is. Yes. He actually might want to not target the reactor to make sure that he's preventing Anthrax from having control of his own ship. Yes. The, no, he's issue, getting the issue with that is he's clearly taking damage, though. And even if Anthrax can't control his ship, he can still fire back, and Lunastro has run Ooh. out of back armor. There is a control room that's getting dangerously exposed on Luna as well. And if any of the prisms go or the reactors reactor. go, he just dies. There, yep, yep, there. That Oof. reactor was exposed. Lunastro did a pretty good job, but despite the thick side armor, it does not have enough back armor. It's gonna watch out with the exposed missile modules. Yes, the issue is the Anthrax can't run away and defend all of his parts, so he has to run at Lunastro or take damage, which is not a good position to be in. <laughs> oh, getting rammed against the asteroid is going to mute his missiles. If Yes, this is definitely ideal. To keep him rammed. That is going to be very dangerous. This is definitely ideal for Lunastro. Um, Anthrax cannot win in a shoving match, and if he's stuck against the asteroids, then his missiles are all not going to work. That should be pretty much the end of it right there. Fant There's no way out of that. Fantastic play for, from Lunastro. Cutting Anthrax in half so that there's limited functionality. There we go. They should have access to their control, the control of their ships now. I still don't think it's going to change anything for Anthrax, though. There's only a few panes of armor and two shields in between the lasers and his control room. Yeah, that's right about to die. He did manage to get off the asteroid, but that was more or less because he got broken in half. <laughs> yes. Losing half your ship is not a sustainable strategy for surviving. <laughs> yeah, that, that definitely improvement that can be made. I'm also wondering how, like, based off, like, the speed loss, maybe it's better to just hold on to it. And also, by having the forks, it keeps him further away from Anthrax, which means it's harder for missiles to loop around behind him. The thing is, the aiming is super important for Lunastro. They effectively are dealing so much more damage by virtue of actually having aimed it. When it's just aimed forward, it takes much longer to kill an opponent because it can just be shifted over armor and such. It's like Luna's lost sizable amount of rear armor, so this could go very badly. Anthrax but is definitely can make on... this ram that. Oh, no, he missed the ram. This is still going to be p very painful for Anthrax. <laughs> Anthrax is losing quite a few of his uh, missile modules. There's a lot of fire going on inside of the ship. Yes, the sustained damage of the fire and being throwing out like half as many missiles right now is going to severely inhibit his damage output. 
really he running for his life right now. Side armor. I'm about to potentially cut off the back if he's lucky. But yes. More importantly, knock out some factories. Trying to take cut supply lines potentially, or just outright cut the segment off so that they can't be resupplied at all. I think he just keep knocking out missile modules. He's already taken out what three? Yeah, two or three. And, this and the ones that remain are missing a lot of their launchers. And this particular pattern that Lunastro is flying in makes it essentially impossible for the missiles to hit their rear. So they can just continue doing this for however the long they want, even if it's not the fastest way to kill Anthrax. Fortunately, Anthrax, through the um, weight loss of having your sides torn off, and through piloting, is now rotating the face's armor forwards to prevent Lunastro from killing him as quickly as possible. He did almost turn a second ago, but he managed to get out of that. Yes. Almost overturning again, but still managing to control it. So Anthrax is going to continue to take damage, and Lunastro is just going to be completely fine and not run out of ammo. So they can just do this for the entire 7 extra minutes if they want to. No matter how effective Anthrax is, they need to go for a kill, because they just can't outlast Anthrax Lunastro. Anthrax overturning to defend his control room. Luna almost had an opportunity to take out some. Oh, the power is cut off to a lot of the factories. That's yes. causing big issues. Lunastro decides to commit with a ram, it appears, but Anthrax has so few missile launchers that he likely won't be able to punish. He's only got two operating factories right now. Still enough to win, it's just very unlikely and exceedingly improbable. Yeah, that is not looking good for Anthrax. The Morbider Supremacy is finally getting put put in its place this tournament. Yes, a very a very impressive display from Lunastro. Most would say that a Missile Orbiter is going to definitely trounce a Ion ship of any kind. Said so Nick is shooting into the asteroid and going to be exposing his side. Oh, this is not going to go well. Yeah, that's exactly what Salus wants. It's a reactor already. Oh my. Damn. And a control room on fire. At half health. And stuck on an asteroid, it would appear. My tip to Nick is to uh, go with the punches when fighting tractor beams. Sometimes it's best to turn with them to spin so you can spin it, use them to help you spin around faster so you're facing the right direction. It's definitely in an unenviable position. I think Salos is skilled enough that such um, rudimentary tricks wouldn't do anything. <laughs> Salos wins, probably the fastest set in the tournament thus far. Yikawa has no rear armor, which is going to be very problematic when fighting Morbiders. Yes, if he gets lucky with nukes, as he has done several times at this point, then, you know, anything can happen. But... Oh yeah, like, I forgot about his nukes. He hasn't yeah. fired them though. Yes, it's he's never gonna hit with how um, Black Hat's moving or hitting in advantageous positions. Ooh, that bunch of missiles just barely missed all the thrusters ever. Oof. A lot of thrusters exposed now. Oh, already taking pretty significant ship damage. Lost um, a lot of armor on his side, so his prisms are actually exposed if the missiles hit at the right angle. Or if they just go through oh. the center. <laughs> How'd that happen? I think they might have knocked something loose that blocked a shield or something. That is very shocking and surprising. Oh, it denied yeah. his main weapon now. I think they actually know they knocked out the four middle shields and managed to thread the needle between the other two. Yes, I think that is also what occurred. That's like a one block space. Actually, Kawa is still able to somehow shoot out front barely. It is not likely that the ions will ever come back into play, though. Unless. Oh, there goes a chunk of armor. That too. occurs. I guess his ions can be used now, but that is a huge gap. 
that can now just instantly kill Kala if any missiles go there. Crew efficiency for Blackout is impressive. Yes, Blackout doing a phenomenal job, really establishing themselves as a very good player, despite this being their very first appearance in a tournament. Oh, I trying to hold on. Consistently firing every opportunity. There's no gaps. And I think that may be the end of Kala very quickly. Let's see if those nukes do anything today. Oh, that's certainly the right position for them to be in. Oh, they took out a sizable hole on that side. If you can get around there. If Kala can launch another nukes. volley of nukes from that into that position, then it will deal a lot of damage. It'll cut off all the missile energy. But there's still a lot of stored energy, so it wouldn't be over. It's actually cutting through Blackout, too. Blackout managed to get stuck on it, and Blackout's ship, I think, is victim to chaining explosions, so it can't lose a single missile module, otherwise they'll all die. Somehow has not lost a single missile launcher. <laughs> oh, there you go. There we go. And now Blackout will technically die to fire over time. Caller doing an excellent job. Managed to get Blackout stuck in a ram and then cut through him. Kala wins. Oh my. That was quite the change around. I was not expecting that with how the last one went. Let's see if anybody runs into that asteroid. It's a ram in pretty much the same place. Except Blackout turned out of it better. Yes. Blackout seems to be better focused on preventing the ions from boring through a specific location. Hopefully, I think I think Blackout is trying to also um, stop Kawa's spin so that the missiles can properly hit the accurate the places they want to be hitting. More nukes coming in. He's still got two to fire that he has, but most of the nuke modules are actually dead. Though it seems like there's an approach on a reactor right down the middle. It appears to be the case that Blackout is also stuck. Kala is fully committing to this, and he manages and to get it. Burning control room that's almost dead. This is right about to burn to death. Even if Kala just left the control room. Well, there we go. It's dead there. Kala wins. They're choosing to try and commit again, hoping that Cool Gamer Tag doesn't manage to shoot it. Oof. It was surprising. Cool Gamer Tag did not repeat last time. And there are so many fires. Huge amount of distraction. Ten fire extinguishers, though. Oh, Cool Gamer Tag evidently was not watching the stream to see what that stick does. <laughs> and he neglected the importance of it. It's still possible for him to win this, but it's going to be very difficult turn, with turn, a nearly exposed reactor, but not quite turn exposed. Turn your shields on, Intershade. Turn your shields on! He can win this, but he needs to turn his shields on so he doesn't get one-tapped. Turn your shields on! Ooh. Oh no, Shade. He could have, especially with Cool Gamer Tag facing the wrong direction. You know, cool Gamer Tag doesn't have any control over his ship if he gets the right shot. Turns sufficient things off. Oh yeah, he took out a control room. No longer will that option present itself. Inoshade has a few remaining shots. Cool Gamer Tag just needs to tank them and Inoshade's out of it. Yeah, that that was a fatal mistake to leave those shields off. Oof. It's it's not now I don't think he could penetrate deep enough. Now potentially out of it, like the two rails got did pretty sufficient damage. Unfortunately, his firing timing is just bad, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Will gamer tag successfully deflected all of the shots on his corner armor, and Eno Shade is taken out. Unfortunately, unless Game Knight gets the mother of all rams, I don't think Slow King is going to largely be taking any damage because of his speed and shields. Yeah, and he's got plenty of nukes to put in the right places. He also has sufficient nukes that he can probably just launch them right now and have them go straight into game night. Ooh, uh, there were a couple shields left, so... A couple hitting around the side, though. 
game it only night... takes one real lucky nuke to end this. Yes, but Game Knight manages to completely survive with trivial damage, and Slow King will continue to get lazed over time. That's not a bad. That's an awful position for Slow King. Takes oh, a huge losing several amount. modules. Oh my! Almost gets stuck on the asteroid too. That could have been very bad. Game Knight forced to move forward so that he doesn't expose his sides. Slow King manages to get stuck on an asteroid again. Oh no! Slow oh, King early he's GG. He's shooting sideways. Wait, he's strafing. He might be able to. Doesn't he's real lucky? Yeah, he strafed out of that. Oh. Oh. Slow King potentially oh, could have been. In he's the... connected to his control room by a one frame. Oh my! He could very easily lose his ship, the front of his ship, because his control room has one angled frame connecting. Um, it says you're lagging. Gonna have to kick you, unfortunately. Go for it. Yes, so moving on. Um, Slow King doesn't have any weapons left. Well, he has point defense. Oh, but it, this gets disconnected. Slow King has no way to continue fighting back at this point. Kim Knight will slowly tear into the ship remaining. Slow King seems to be stuck on Game Knight as well. Eh, much scarier asteroid, if anything else. Slow King seems to be... Properly stuck though, despite Game Knight's different movement options. So this could potentially last a lot longer if Slow King is determined to wait it out as much as possible. Game Knight uses Slow King's other ship to try and peel him off, not to much avail. Slow King's ship has its control room turned off. Slow King does not have any control any longer, and he forfeits. Slow King is well known for having very little redundancy in his ships. Famously, one of the players that loses due to lack of fire extinguishers, at least not in this case. Auto fires his nukes? All miss. <laughs> That's not something you want to be doing given how nukes have very limited ammo, and if he gets stuck on his front, he's going to take damage. Like, even if shields are good against ions, not at this range. Oh, that is... Ooh, now he managed to whip it off. It was getting kind of close to a reactor for a second. Manage, but those ions will cut through the shields faster than they can recharge, even if Slow King spreads the damage perfectly. Oh! And... That was a surprisingly quick match. Yeah. And Last time he shot his nukes, then drove right into them. Yeah, it's if he wants to do that, he has to sacrifice his main ship so that it's occupied and can't deal with the ship behind it. Or he needs to do the aiming thing where you tilt your ship sideways and line them up to cut through your opponent. He does have to worry about dodge, though. Well, he could dodge is devastating him. Well, the thing is that because of how fast the nuke platform is, you can just position it in front of the opponent so that you have to move forward to dodge or such, which would Blazing. never occur. A very nice dodge right there. The warp has occurred. Let's see where it is. Directly in front of him. That's what he wanted. Oh, that's... He missed his... I mean, he still got it fired off. That is not a good... Oh, he manages there. to get the other ship behind it, though. That... That getting the ship... That's, a, that's it. How yes. is he still alive? The single control, oh, a control room. room that's got one health left. And there Blaze gets it. I love how Z James, uh, his paint job counts off his nuke launchers. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Oh? Oh, Oof. that is devastating because now just about all he can do is spin. All of the nukes hit as well, so Z James just needs to run from the nuke ship. Tilt, 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 tilt. <laughs> Let's see. All oh, those are firing they're, closely they're enough. Shields. They are through the shields. Did not the, get the reactor. It seems like we have two spinners left in this game. <laughs> no, don't. Stop rotating. Stop rotating. No, 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 no. If he had continued spinning, he would have ended up with Blaze behind him. <laughs> And now, since they're both stuck here, they can just fire at each other. Blaze does have the ability to actually fly straight, though, because he does have the one engine kind of off-center. 
He can only but move in his not. current. Yeah, he can only he's move in his. He can only move in his current circle, and Z James can continue intercepting that circle. Yep, that was the end of it. That is it. I have a feeling those tractor beams are going to really ruin the ions. Well, Lunastro just needs to get the hooks involved, I would say. But Lunastro chooses to yeah, shoot those off. the hooks off. As well as the armor, that's not... <laughs> yeah, that's oh, just this, about... This... Yep, yeah, that's... A very quick execution. <sighs> it's just about how I expected that to go. <laughs> Lunastro is probably going to be... Um, trying to make it behind Salifs because Salifs cannot chase them as quickly as Lunastro can chase back. Salifs easily turning around. I have to wonder what Lunastro's plan is here. Salifs. I wonder if a full uh, barrage can make it through those forward shields. I don't think so because they're six. Yeah, I don't think but so. They might might be with two of them, if it's placed well. Either way, you need, Luna needs a ram, and that's not going to happen with tractor beams, really. Yeah, you, you you do not want to ram against tractor beams, because that gives them complete control over you. That's an awful position. No! Dallas, fortunately not capable of punishing it, comes close, though. Lunastro continues to slowly bore away at Salus's front. Unfortunately, not capable of doing concentrated damage without quickly they're rotating. But they seem because to be Because of how sharply they're rotated, a lot of their ions end up pointing at each other, which means they're dealing less damage because of efficiency issues. Yes, it's still some damage at the very least. And this is, I would say that this is ideal for them, where they can get in this spiral, where Salifs can't really do functional damage, and Lunastro continues to fire at them. Though there is the gap in Lunastro's left side that Salifs can likely aim at and fire through if they get lucky. See, this is the issue oh, with to... ramming. <laughs> Almost spun him out there. And that... That's not a trick that can be pulled off again, because Lunastro has too little side armor there to support that. And he lost connection to one of his thrusters, so he's going to lose some oh. thrust right there after it runs out of power. Very Ooh. close. <laughs> that's a control we're missing. Is he out of control? Yes, he is. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. <laughs> he's quickly powered off all his weapons to hopefully regain this, but I doubt yeah, that's not fast enough. Oh, we're going straight for that center react um center group of engines and everything. Yes, Kawa having learned from the previous fight, I would say, is now trying to reproduce the effects. That's not Oh, like, he's losing big engines there. That's an awful position that, to be in though. The, he lost. He only actually lost two of them. He but he lost some corridors, so all of his outside engines are going to have a much, much slower recharge because his crew are having to walk against a fast corridor. Oof. A walkway, to be exact. Oh, it even did take a little bit of reactor damage, but seems to be making up for it by fighting back at this point. Trying to cut out the top control room as he kills the back one. He is successful and gets it. That was much faster. I've seen how ridiculously devastating Cool Gamer Tag's ship is, and I think that if Game Knight is not careful, he will just have his six shields sh shot through and shut down. So I would say that Game Knight needs to get close by rolling his armor, and then ramming him so that he can't fan anymore. Cool Gamer Tag is... There are a lot of one-shot opportunities on Game Knight. Anything that destroys one prism destroys everything. Yes. But Game Knight only needs to start touching him, and then Cool Gamer Tag loses. And that is the one shot that Cool Gamer Tag got off on it unharassed. So let's see how Game Knight punishes it. The teeth will. Well, only two shields left, but Cool Gamer cannot get out of the ram. Cool Gamer Tag needs to set the rest of his rails to fire at will, I would say. But it is not going to be enough, I don't think. There was one shield left at one point, so it did come very close. But that should be the end of it. 
the angle that Game Night was at was probably preferable and that it was arming the reactor, but it'll take a little bit longer now. I don't think that Cool Gamer Tech can make it through the shields by auto firing at all, so that is it. I always love ion duels. Yes. It's a very so interesting can... because Kawa has these niche or utility nukes on the side, but Lunastro has extremely thick side armor. Like four layers, three layers in most places. That's very unexpected. Most of the time it's at most two. Hold up, is my audio good? Yes. I could hear right. something in the background, but it's mostly fine. Yeah, I'm just muting it for a second because of that. Nukes not making too much of an impact. Well, they do batter the front, which is relevant because you have to get through your opponent's armor to then pressure the shields. Otherwise, they just shift too easily. But the issue with that is that Kawa cannot win a hit on match. Like, he has less ions and he has no disruptors. And those nukes, nukes effectively miss. <laughs> For all the effectiveness they would have. He does have reloads on the nukes that might come into play. How about getting less time actually firing at Luna? Oh, I think is understandably trying to focus on using the nukes because it's his win condition because he just cannot win in a hit-on fight. And continues aiming them at awful timings, timings so that they all keep missing. <laughs> Or hitting very irrelevant locations. Now they got a stare down. Which Lunastro will win. <laughs> yeah, he's got more armor to... Like, so much more like firepower it... and disruptors, too. Just about to get finished off the stare down. Somehow, Kawa holding on longer than I expected, but... He did still lose the stare down. Yes. There's making a difference. Probably to my downside, but it's a matter of principle. Finally, it appears that the rod is closed enough that go. the match is resumed. <laughs> Sorry for the delay, everyone. It was an intermission. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's got somewhere with that. Pretty good damage. If they can do that four more times, they might get nukes in the actual barrel hitting the shields. Just gotta let them not get killed right now, though. Just about to lose one or two launchers. Actually, still got all his launchers somehow. I, know I think he's for a long. ram. Oh, oh that's a be, terrible yeah, position. He is managing to turn out of it, though. If he'd been much unluckier, that would have been catastrophic. And that barrel's decently open on one side. And the show gonna dodge these nukes as well, or mitigate them really effectively. Call it a good position. They didn't deal any relevant damage. But now he's this ram is working a little better. The thing is that Lunastro still has so much more armor to get through for Kawa, for Kawa to try and get through. The Kawa's armor is even spaced, it's light armor. Yeah, that's that's like trivial compared to what Lunastro has, which is like seven, seven plus layers of solid armor. Kawa's sending his armor down the barrel. And the disruptors are going to start tearing through the shields as well. Oh, this is going to be the end right here. One more shield. Yep. And the control rooms are going to be aimed at and taken out. <laughs> Lunastro yeah. wins. It's something that it's Game Night... Good. Something Game Night is enthusiastically moving forward with at the very least. I think that that ship has been the coolest in the tournament at the very least. Also, very good looking. Yes. Well, that's partially what I meant. 
And you know, with sufficient speed, maybe he can just get around Percy Jim. And outrun the missiles. Uh. He. Out managing to avoid those ones. This is. Thing is, it only just takes. It doesn't take that many. This isn't. Oh, like... that's coming in. Oh my. But he's getting good damage on that side. Look at his control, aiming his laser so effectively. Game Knight is doing fantastic work. That is unexpected. Almost cutting off the factories. None of the missiles can keep now up with this ship. Ram. He's going to get and... the reactor. No, Prezi Jim manages to rotate just in time, but he's still dodging oh. the missiles. But now he's going to be very exposed to that side. Ooh. Oof. Yeah, that, Game that was a bad call in Game Knight's call part right there. Now he's... It's kind of stuck. Game Knight and by, yeah, that's... loses. Oh no. Very impressive performance at the very least though. I was honestly expecting the match to be a lot cleaner. A lot more one-sided, yeah. Game Knight looks like he'll be start trying the same strategy. Breezy Gem appears to be trying to circumvent that by leaving sooner. But it's still kind of in the same position as earlier. So Prezi Gem, knowing what happens, is going to be going into a hard turn sooner to try and circumvent it. Game Knight is you know, destroying some, almost destroying some modules. I think he's cut off some things from power. He has made supplies of... lines worse, but not cut off anything yet. Ooh, this is ideal. If he can block, if he can body block all those launchers, that means that Prezi Gem can't deal any damage. You know, just ram in and end it. But I think that that's not going to happen right there. Yeah, Prezi Jim knows very well what would occur if he allowed that to happen, so he made sure to rotate out of it. Game Knight's still doing like fantastic. There, there are two groupings of launchers that are cut off from power, but they had power storage, so they're going to run for a little bit longer. Interesting. Game Knight forced to go through all of the front armor from Prezi Jim. I think he might rotate at some point to try and attack the other side if Breezy Jim continues to move like this. Oh, he's, ooh, look at those. Oof. Barely dodging Oof. a big grouping. But an exposed reactor is partially damaged. Roughly half health. The issue with this current strategy that Game Knight is employing is that Breezy Jim can just continue rotating in this current arrangement. And even if he clears that section of armor, he can just rotate harder, and then he has to deal with another section of armor. So, ooh, missiles are like so close from the back of the ship every time. Oh, but there is a hole in the armor that almost got exploited. Game Knight manages to laze all of Prezi Jim's rear, unfortunately not doing anything functional. This is a very close battle. One small mistake from anyone just ends it. Fires may be catastrophic for Prezi Jim. Currently, he has a missile launcher that doesn't appear like it'll be repaired. Those are the same ones that are cut off from power, so losing them isn't going to be too big of a difference. Well, it might chain into the other missile launchers, though. Oh! Oh my. That reactor is just out there now. Game Knight is just playing with fire. Repeatedly narrowly dodges the missiles. He might be best by going for those remaining launchers at this point because there aren't that many left. Well, he's trying to get any functional damage he can, it's just the Prezi Gem is far too effective at rotating his front to be in the way. Well, seems like he's going to take some serious module damage right now. Yes, and he seems to be trying to hold fire to make the missiles go in knife patterns. But has the supply lines cut to the left two missile modules, so... Technically, Game oh. Knight can stall him out for energy now. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. He just needs to 
play defensively, I would say, and then he has this particular match. It but only takes like three good missile shots for it to end, though. Oh, oh. Ooh. That was That rough. was just a couple <laughs> blocks off. This is the tense, honestly, one of the most tense matches. Oh, yeah. Barely dodging some there. Game Knight continuing to play on the aggressive side, not letting it up for a moment, despite the fact that Prezi Jim is technically out of supplies. Well, he is, he can just hold on to the missiles he has, though. So he's like, Game Knight has to have those missiles shot at him and manage to dodge them. Or tank them on his front like that. Yeah, and there's, there's this still is, ammo. This is bad, this is bad. Crazy Jim managing Ooh. to body block Game Knight, preventing rotation. It might hit the reactor. Oh, oh, oh! oh. Yeah, there we go. Crazy Jim oh. narrowly takes the win. Dang, that was close in so many times. I Game Knight piloted that so well. I really wanted to see that go to a 1-1. One -one. Yes, I wanted a third match too. So, I feel like this one's going to favor itself as... I mean, he's notoriously taken out all the Morbiders he's faced very effectively. I have to see what happens. I think Prezi Jim is competent enough to be playing as defensively as possible, which is necessary when the opponent can one-shot you from anywhere. Yeah. But we'll see. Salas is pretty good at engineering situations where he's in the right position at the right time. I think they're going for a direct confrontation right now. Well, Silas doesn't want to get stuck out in in between an asteroid where Percy Jim can just sit there and fire at him because he does have reverse thrust that hasn't been used much outside of turning. And he also wants to charge towards Percy Jim such that he can apply pushing force. And he prevents him from turning. Oh, that asteroid Oof. could be... Nah, uh, he almost got pushed into the asteroid. That would have been very bad. I think Salifs would be best served by going through that corner hole that he established. But his side... And yup, there that goes. Crazy Jim instantly uses hotkeys to turn off thrusters and... Hopefully can fire more missiles, but Salif seems to be in the right position to punish it. No, not quite. Let's take out missiles. Reza Jim's thrusters firing desperately to try and rotate the ship. And that is it. Salif's still slaughtering the competition. Also, because his tractor beams are at the back of his ship, he helps himself turn with them. Yes. Salif's going for the corner again. Probably the weakest point. And... As you just widen that hole more and more, you're presented with more options as to what you can fire at this behind that hole. Unfortunately, it must expose his side to shoot at it, which Crazy Jim is punishing very effectively here. There we go for self as this. So they both have one win. Both of them need two more wins to move on and eliminate self the other. Or knock self down is the not other. spying on the stream. Well, there's like a two minute delay, so there's not much point. Oh, yeah, that's right. Also, if we respond to them, they can't hear us for two minutes, so I don't know why <laughs> we, were, we were even telling them something. <laughs> yeah. It's used to there not being such a large delay. The Salifs is not being capable of, is not dealing nearly as effective damage as he was the first two times. Could be because of the different approach he took this time. Yeah, he's taking some sizable side armor damage right there. Crazy Jim just pounding away at Silas. All that armor is just being shredded. Looks like he might get a shot off here, though. It does, does not penetrate, but it did deal di significant damage to the armor. It presents the option for another killing shot, but Crazy Gem's going to likely be preventing that. I think the two large shields are sufficient enough to block all six rails 
if they take a little bit of armor damage as well. Oh, this is... N Oof, nice shot. Yeah. Instant turn off of the thruster. It's very professional and effective from Prizzy Chum. I don't think the Salus is even going to be capable of punishing it properly. If I were Prizzy Chum, I think I'd turn the shields off and try and keep at least some thrusters on though. Because it's going to be more important here. That's Almost lose rails. Up rail guns. Hold up. Oof, better take the shot while you still can. Oof. That was a very close. There's a big asteroid in the middle, which might change things up because of those missiles. Yes, Percy Gem wants to remain at range, and because of this asteroid, they've now been funneled into a close proximity, which will be in Salus's favor, I would say. Unfortunately, really doesn't do anything to prevent Salus from taking another corner shot like that. Big concern is if he starts running into that asteroid and knocking his rotation. Yes, that would be very unfortunate. He really needs to get lucky with taking down some thrusters like he did last time. Oh, some thrusters are offline. Could be logistics issues. Solves the ship. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's difficult. only a temporary offline. It's difficult to properly combat stress ships unless you like actively test them. And some many players choose to not reveal their ships until the tournament itself to prevent counterplay. Good damage to a thruster on the side. Only took out one thruster though. It but did on also, the other side. It did also cut logistics though. So those missiles will be turning off eventually. Cell phase has lost significant thrusters, but he seems to still be holding on fairly well. Percy Jim getting the most out of the missiles he has left. Yes. Oh, look at that. I'm only through the front. <laughs> almost took out a railgun. And another group of thrusters are down. I don't think the Salves is capable of. Well, unless the asteroid has something to say about it. South seems yeah, to be that... in an awful position here. Just lost railguns. Some of his railguns are out of power. He only had one railgun able to fire then. And only three left. Two left. Yeah, I don't think that that's enough to do anything left. Even if he managed to get one reactor, he just wouldn't have sufficient firepower to kill the other one. Percy Jim on half his missile launchers now because the logistical cutoff. But that doesn't seem like it's gonna change much now that self has only has two railguns now what? one railgun left. <laughs> and there yep. <laughs> Going into a final match. This is match, very close. Match point. Could go either way. Oh yeah, but they're mentally stressed. Very, very strenuous matchup to try and be dealing with when it could so easily go either way. That's not ideal for self is. But Percy Jim running into some of his own missiles, which isn't helping him any. But they're not really near any asteroids, so Percy Jim's enjoying that luxury. Yes, Salus is in a good oh, side position. This is this is gonna be coming to a hard turn to try and counteract it. Successfully does so. Salus loses. Selfish lost, almost lost a reactor. Oh, I wasn't, and a tractor beam. Yeah, he paid a heavy price to try and get that shot off, and it didn't didn't play out. And oh, that that is that was one of the quickest matches yeah. thus far. That's the end of that. Self is forfeiting. Oh, you just can't do anything from there. Yeah, it's pretty much over. Just waiting for it to blow up that last reactor.